Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Ben, welcome back to the channel. Now today is a good day. Not only is the sun shining outside for the first time in a while, but the mailman came with a couple of packages that have had quite the journey. All the way from Australia, we've got some of the very first parts for the Troopy. And you may be asking yourself, Ben, where are we starting? Is it gonna be bumpers? Is it suspension? Is it lockers? Is it sliders? My answer to that question is no. The contents of this package do not meaningfully improve the off-road capabilities of the Troopy or dive deep into the mechanicals. Because every good overlander knows you spend your money on things like lights before lockers. I think that's how it goes. Baja Designs, please sponsor me. Instead, the contents of these two packages uh, have some creature comforts inside. We're upgrading one piece of the interior that is showing some of the worst signs of age and solving one of the biggest problems that I've encountered thus far in the couple of weeks I've owned the Troopy. To really explain what we're up to, let's head out to the truck. All right, now we're here in the Troopy to talk about the very first project we're gonna do. And it is something that jumped out at me as soon as I climbed inside for the first time. It really just lets you know that this is a 31 year old truck that needs some TLC. Surprisingly, it's not the lack of a headliner up here on the roof. That's a much bigger project that we'll tackle later on. But upon initially climbing in, you know, one thing you'll notice is, is just the plastics and, and the things in here, they're 31 years old and, and therefore, you know, you're seeing some signs of cracking. Uh, and on the door cards, especially, you know, they're tearing away from, from the doors. We've got some rips, they're wavy, maybe even some water damage on, on the MDF inside or something like that. And this is a really easy fix. So it's where we're gonna start. All right, now this first package is from Australian Door Cards. They do one thing and they do it well, and that is ABS door cards. I ordered a four door set. So it's the barn doors in the back, the driver and the passenger door. You can also get the panels for the rear of the Troopy, the walls. I didn't order the wall panels because eventually we'll do a full build out back there and we won't need them. Let's open up the package and see what we got. tons of clips. All right, so it seems like everything's in the package. We've got the clips, we've got four pieces, one for each door, and uh, our next step is gonna be to remove these raggedy old ones. All right, now in terms of tools for this job, it's uh, pretty simple. There's just two, hopefully. I don't know what I'm doing. We've got a Phillips head screwdriver and uh, we got a little panel puller, pry bar. I'm thinking Things should be pretty straightforward. It looks like, uh, you know, things like the door handle here have hidden screws behind them. So panel popper helps with that. And then we just start uh, pulling screws. Oh man, tons of dust coming out of here too. And there you can see the screws that were uh, hidden here in the handle behind those little uh, little closeouts. One thing I'm not quite sure about is how this comes off. Well, with those screws out here, you can definitely see that the door card has seen better days. Cracked straight down the middle there. But it gives me easy access to figure out what's going on here with the door latch. So I've somehow got to figure out how to disconnect this mechanism hopefully without breaking it okay I actually think this handle mechanism is pretty straightforward here uh, this rod is in a little retention clip so I'm just gonna try to uh, there we go 
and that lets me lift the rod straight out of there. The mechanism now is entirely disconnected. A quick consultation with Google has revealed that these manual door cranks are typically held on with some sort of a spring clip, a spring retainer clip. And so I've grabbed a flathead screwdriver because the plastic pry bar wasn't cutting it. And I'm just gonna try to get to that spring clip and uh, pop it right on out of there. Oh, there we go. That is what I was after. Cool. Easy as that. Well, you can definitely tell that, that particle board has seen better days. Cracked right through, signs of water damage. Really just 31 year old piece of particle board. And here's what the door looks like behind there. Hey Bandit, what do you think bud? You like hanging out in the front yard while we work on projects? Now one thing that I did notice because of all this rain we've been having recently is that uh, the doors were not fully draining. There was some sloshing that happened and I really don't want water to accumulate and start causing rust from the inside. So we're gonna do a couple of things. We're just gonna go ahead and inspect it, find the drain, uh, try to clear it out. It's probably just all that Kuwaiti dirt that over time is caked into concrete. And uh, I think we should be able to fix this problem. So this here should be the drain point. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is just try to clear things out with a screwdriver. You can see it's all, all caked with mud in there. There is so much mud inside this door. Piece of wood. Yeah, hey, what do you think, bud? What do you think? Well, Bandit and I are trying to figure out what to do here. There is way more mud accumulated in this door than I anticipated. It's probably an inch deep. Uh, across the entire bottom of the door. I think I'm gonna grab the vacuum. I've broken it up and I'm gonna try to vacuum it out and let's see if that works. Well, we got things all cleaned up here. I went ahead and uh, wiped the door down with some simple green just to clean it up, uh, some of the gunk and crap that was in there. And then uh, there was some bare metal uh, in some spots, so I went ahead and hit it with some Rust-Oleum, uh, just trying to make sure that when I close this up with the door card, I'm not gonna have any issues with rust in the future. So, Let's get the door card on. This is a pretty uh, precision laser cut sort of thing. It's got uh, all of the mounting locations in there. Everything seems to line up really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pack this, uh, this close corner with one of the, uh, with one of the push pins <laughs> that it came with. Push pin through the hole, push pin through the hole, and lock it in. All right, that's one down. I'm gonna do one more. And the important thing is before we get too far, we've gotta get the handle back installed so that we can get the mechanism uh, hooked up properly. I would actually love to just buy new handles entirely. These have seen better days, but uh, I'm not sure if you can, so for now, let's go ahead and reuse the old ones. There are uh, these little tabs on the back that slot through the sheet metal here. So, let's see, just like that. Slide it over, okay. 
Now our hole is lined up for our screw. I'm gonna pull gently back. Just so that I can get the mechanism reinstalled here. Come on, don't fight me. Okay. mechanism reinstalled. Well, I went ahead and got to the same exact point over here on the passenger side. We have uh, cleaned all of the accumulated dust, dirt, and debris out of the door. And uh, I'm gonna have to get creative on this side because the plastic clip that is supposed to retain the latch mechanism here is completely broken. This is hard to do with one hand. We're ready to put the panel on. So I'll start here with just one push pin in this top corner, just to get things held on. I'll go ahead and do this one as well. Here is my hacky solution for that broken door latch or tension clip. Uh, a couple of zip ties overlapped seem to be holding it in place. It's not super clean. I'd rather probably use some stainless safety wire or something like that, but uh, we're gonna make do for now. it is it's on there all right so we got the new door cards installed on the driver and passenger side doors and they look like a million bucks i am super stoked on them but it's not solving the real problem that i encountered when i first started driving this and let's talk about what that is so this truck being a manual transmission means uh you know all of your hands are doing something you've got one hand on the steering wheel another hand on the shifter until you get up to speed if you're on the highway or something, then you've got a free hand and you can grab a drink, take a drink, something like that. Well, the problem is that in these 31 year old trucks, these were your cup holders. Just those little indentations there designed for parking at a drive-in or a soda fountain, whatever they had that long ago. And so instead, what I've been doing is just shoving things in there, tucking them between the fire extinguisher and the parking brake. Uh, this obviously works nicely with a water bottle. It works far less nicely with a cup of coffee or an energy drink or a can of soda or something. And so the lack of cup holders it's really just been a pain in the butt. This right here is the solution to my cup holder problem. This is the One Stone armrest designed in Australia for the Land Cruiser. It's got a cup holder, it's got an armrest, and it mounts right to your windowsill. It has a little clip here that just clips in and it's got some magnets to hold it tight to the steel frame of the door. And uh, they give you some clear protective vinyl to go right over those magnets, right where they sit, so that you're not uh, wearing away your paint or anything like that. Let's go ahead and fit it up, see how it looks. Oh, just like that. There it is. Not only do you get yourself a cup holder, you get an armrest too. How cool is that? Just go ahead and line that clear protective vinyl up right where the magnets land. Bob's your uncle.
well now I don't condone drinking and driving, but I wanted to show the cup holder works and uh, I'll drink to a job well done. Now the projects you just saw are admittedly very simple and straightforward. And that's actually why I chose them to be the first that I tackled on the truck. It's easy as I'm just at the starting line here and dreaming big to start to feel like I'm in over my head and incredibly overwhelmed and almost paralyzed by how much I have to do here. But tackling small things and getting a quick win, especially one that's highly visible that I can point to and say, I've started. There's undeniable proof that I am making progress in this project. It's actually incredibly motivating. And it just has me even more excited for the more complex projects, the axle rebuilds, the lockers, the overhaul in the engine bay. And I'm excited to share that all with you. So there's a lot more in store. Hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed yourself. And until next time, get out and explore somewhere.